Sunday, almost lunchtime, and I am outside getting ready to plant some bulbs in one of the front gardens um, near my house. And I thought I would take you guys along and show you what I'm gonna be working on today. Now, this garden was one that Dean and I dug up Early this spring, we pulled all of these old bulbs out of the garden. I don't even know what they were. They had just kind of just grown in too thickly together. Um, I think there were a bunch of daylilies actually. Anyway, we dug all of that out and we mulched it. We put a little gravel pathway in. We put um, a ton of perennials in and they're very small so they haven't grown to full size yet. They're doing really well where they are. Um, but I went to Sam's Club and I went to Lowe's here in the last couple of weeks and I bought some bulbs that you're supposed to plant in the fall and they'll give you some early spring blooms. So I'm gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna show you this garden area and tell you a little bit about the plans that I have for it. And then I'm gonna show you the bulbs that I have and I'm going to plant some of them. Okay, so this is the garden bed that is right in front of our house. So you can see there's a little pathway that flows through here. Over here is where we park. And then there's this ramp that leads up to our house. Um, and then there's the front of the house with all the construction stuff around it. <laughs> um, so anyway, this garden is one of the first things that you see. And there's my dog, Rosie. <laughs> is one of the first things you see when you walk up to the house. So let me take you to the front of it so you can kind of see what it's gonna look like. Everything's still small right now, like I said. Um, so I have some lavender and some echinacea there. And then right here, I've got like a little succulent that's gonna grow out of that little container. Um, and I need to fill in some of this area with bulbs or some other kind of annual plant next year. Um, sort of where Rosie is laying, we have like this area right around this pole. Um, there's this big pole that was put here and she used to have like a little uh, the lady who built the house had a, like a flying pig because she had a pig she she had a little pot belly pig and she loved pigs so anyway she had that there we're gonna get like a sign that says something at some point but around that pole I'm gonna put um, some crocuses I bought some crocus bulbs like a mixture of colors and these little plants through here that line the pathway those are flocks and we have like a pink um, and a purple blue color flocks that will bloom and you can see them on this side of the pathway too um, and then these two plants are a hydrangea they're like a white color sorry there's a big truck going by and I don't know if you can hear me but they are a white color and they turn like a rusty pink in the fall and you can see they're already that color around the rock here I've got a bunch of succulents and I've got um, a little corabelle back here and it's not doing too great in that area I'm not sure what's up with it but I, on this other side I have the exact same thing um, this is an ostrich fern right here and it's already having like it's already sprouted another little baby right there <laughs> anyway so around this rock I have the same thing and my corabelle is doing great which it does have a weed in it, it needs to be picked out but anyway it's doing really well and um, in a past video I planted some of these succulents right here on the little tea table um, we have some more lavender on that side I have some hostas here that have uh, purple blooms and obviously the lavender has purple blooms um, we have a couple of ferns right here right here in this corner there's not much I've got a butterfly bush that's a dwarf size butterfly bush it'll get about three foot by three foot and it's in this area these are actually some bulbs and they sprout up like pink and purple colored flowers and I can't remember what they're called but they're not doing well there so I'm probably gonna dig those up and then in this triangle area I'm going to put a mixture of tulips they are pink purple and white tulips and then some other white flowers I'm not sure what they're called I have to show you okay so let me show you the different bulbs that I have for this space and tell you a little bit about what I plan to do in this area so um, actually these bulbs are for another garden. Those are golden Oxford tulips. They go in a different garden. So let me get all this out. And these are Parisian blue alums. They also go in a different garden. Um, all right. So in this space 
here where the butterfly bush is, there are there's like a big long area right in front of the butterfly bush. And I bought these, they're called Double Late Collection. Um, they're like purple, pink, and white mixture of tulips. And they bloom in late spring. And then I thought I would put these things on the two sides of the, the rectangle. Like if the rectangle is like this, I'm gonna make little triangles. And on the outside two triangles, I'll put this mixture of tulips. And I do not even know how to pronounce this. Pashinkina? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> They're like a white flower and they bloom in early spring. Um, and they have like this really pretty like purpley blue kind of color in the middle of the petals. So these are very tiny little bulbs. And so in that middle triangle, I'm gonna plant these. Um, so I'm gonna have like a patch of the white and then on the outsides we're gonna have like pink, purple, and white tulips. And then behind that, the butterfly bush will bloom up in there. So now, if you know anything about butterfly bushes, um, they will stay like all through winter and early spring. You can see what is left over, like the woody parts that are left over, but you can actually cut them completely back to the ground and new growth will come off of them each year. At least that's the way my other butterfly bush worked at my other house. So in the background, there will be nothing in early spring and then you'll have all of this greenery with blooms popping up in front of it. And then, um, let's see, since these tulips bloom in late spring, basically the focal point will be the front of that section. And then later on in the summer, the butterfly bush will come up and it will bloom. And all of the stuff in the front will still be like green grassy looking things while the, like the tulip and whatever this is called, these blooms will be gone, but their greenery will still be there. So it'll be really full and green when the butterfly bush is blooming and you'll have all the color in the front when the butterfly bush is not blooming behind it. So that's my plan. Hopefully it actually works out that way. Um, I also got some bulbs at, let me put these away, at Sam's Club a couple of weeks ago. And I got a big bag of paper white and I am going to put these indoors. I'm gonna get like an antique um, like silver tin and I'm gonna plant these so I can have these blooming indoors. They are an early bloomer. They can also go outside though. They bloom in early spring. So there are 25 bulbs in here. I don't think that I'm gonna need anywhere close to using all of these uh, when I do them inside. So I may kind of mix the two of these together. Actually, let's see, maybe these are the same. No, they're not the same thing. They look very similar. Like these paper whites look kind of similar to this bulb in a way. So I wonder if maybe I can mix these together and have these in the white space in the center of this big rectangle divided up into triangles. So I don't know, I am gonna put these white uh, paper whites out in different places. Um, all of these bulbs are part sun, or I'm sorry, they are full sun to partial sun. And this garden area definitely gets that, especially in the early spring before the dogwood trees bloom. It gets a lot of sun here. So they'll be perfect for this area. Um, yeah, okay. So I think that these will work really well. And then this is the mixture of the crocuses I got. There are 100 crocus bulbs here. So I'm gonna put these over by the, the big metal um, thing that sticks up where we're gonna hang a little sign. Um, I'll, put, I'll put them around in that area and maybe I'll mix. These are very short. So maybe I'll put some tulips around in that area too. I don't know, I may just actually take some crocus bulbs and I don't think I'll do that. Never mind. Oh, I know what I did. I bought these alums. <laughs> this is what I bought. These are like a more purple colored alum. Now, the ones that I have right here, these Parisian blue alums, you can see how like one looks bluer and one looks more purpley pink. So my garden over by our shop has yellows and blues and whites and greens in it. So that's why the Parisian blues go over there. This garden is more like, um, pinks and purples and greens and whites. So that's why this alum is going to come over here. And these actually get quite tall. They are early summer. They grow 
I guess about almost two, two feet, like a foot and a half to two feet tall. So maybe I'll put these around the closest to that middle pole and then I'll put the crocuses kind of like outside of that because these are very short. I think they say they only get four to six inches high. So these are early spring and these are early summer. So these will bloom first and then I'll have a little bit of the green greenery kind of sticking up and then these will pop up. So they're kind of offset. Yeah, so maybe I'll do that. Anyway, lots of bulbs. I've never planted bulbs before. In our other garden, it was all filled with like annuals and perennials. Um, so I'm experimenting here. I'm learning and growing and hopefully I will love bulbs. <laughs> if not, I'll dig them up and move them if they don't look good where they are. So that's the nice thing about bulbs, I think, because you can move them if you remember what's what and where they are. Maybe I should take a picture of what these look like with an image of the front just for reference and put that in like my gardening journal or, or maybe draw a picture and write down where I put them so that I remember it next year. If I don't like where they are and I don't like how it looks and I want to dig all of it up, I'll know exactly where they are. It's a good idea. I better do that. I'm going to run in and grab my gardening journal real quick. <laughs> gladiolas and they're like a pink and purple mixture. I planted four or five of them last year and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this one, ten, has a baby growing on the side of it. So they've doubled and I'm gonna move them. They're really tall and I don't think I want them where I had them anymore. So I'm gonna move these. tulip bulbs and where I'm gonna put the other little white bulbs whatever those things are called all the way over here there's more tulips so there'll be tulips on the sides in the center there'll be the little white flowers pushy push pushy pinkos <laughs> and more tulips over here pushkinia pushkinia pushkina don't know Oliver, do you know how to pronounce that word? Me neither. Okay, so gonna plant these things and then I should be done here. rigged up right there. Oh, <laughs> that hammer. looks like a messed up broom or something. It's a hammer with a towel on it. No, um, somebody I know that's going to help me out said that it's easier to shape it because you didn't get it perfect the first time with a hand hammer than an automatic hammer. And he said, but you have to put a towel on because you can crack them. But you get a, the one that's really high and you want to get it back down where it belongs. Mm -hmm. Break it in half. <laughs> Okay. So the first time when you were laying them and you were tamping them, we didn't have the towel on it. So does it matter, like, I guess if the sand's in there, then they break more easily because they're all packed in now? No, I was setting them. Okay. The so you weren't really time, hitting I'm, them. I'm actually hitting them pretty hard right now. Okay. Um, especially some of them. 
it took the project took so long that we'd stop here and then start there the next day and mm -hmm. it would have rained and so we have something that had to get pulled back out and redone and so if you look and it's not a huge deal but this one might be like just tiny bit high and so yeah, we'll take you can't it, see it at all. give it a couple of good bumps and it'll it does two things. It vibrates the sand down further into the crack because it all gets done twice. And then the other thing is you can you can set them. Okay. Hmm. Well, it looks really good. Like the wall looks great. The black lava rock looks so good over there on the fire pit. Like I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, so we get the sand in, we spray it with water, it glues them in place, and then we put cleaner on the pavers to clean everything and then we put our chairs out and we should be good right That's we have to build the wooden top for the seat and then the boxes where the firewood will sit and then we'll do plants all around the edge um, <laughs> next year next spring Thursday and I have just come outside it's about 1230 so I am heating up some leftovers for lunch today um, and I've just come outside to chat with you guys for just a second I did not blog blog listen to me I blog a lot so I say that often I did not vlog um, at all on Tuesday or Wednesday because there just wasn't really anything going on um, and there's not a whole lot going on today either, but I did want to give a little update on our weekend plans or whatever. So I thought I'd come on here really quick before Dean gets over um, from work for lunch. Um, I'm sitting outside. I don't know if you guys can see or not, but it's really gray and nasty and kind of miserable out here today. It's raining. It's one of those like really steady rains that just keeps coming. The kind that makes me want to take a nap or maybe curl up with some sort of hot drink and books um, or just sit and veg out on TV all day that kind of that kind of day anyway I am NOT doing those things because I'm trying to get the boys done with their schoolwork <laughs> um, but anyway so quick update um, Dean is going to Pennsylvania to see his friend um, this whole weekend he's leaving today after work and he'll be gone until Sunday evening so um, it's very very rare that we are apart like that like where he's gone or I'm gone and the other is left here with the kids um, so I am definitely gonna miss him this weekend but I'm trying to think about some fun things that I can do with the boys while he's gone um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do tonight tonight we may just kind of hang out at the house and veg on TV or something. I don't really know. I'll come up with something that we're gonna do tonight. <laughs> um, but tomorrow, my sister-in-law and her kids are coming over, so the boys always like it when the cousins come over. I think we're gonna kinda do like a pizza night with um, pajamas and movies and popcorn and stuff like that, so that'll be fun. And then on Saturday, my mom is going with us. I'm gonna take the boys to a zoo who, which is kind of in our local area. It's a very small zoo. It's not like a, a big zoo at all. The closest large zoo to us is the Knoxville Zoo and it's huge and amazing. I haven't been there in years, but anyway, um, it's a little far for me to drive with the boys for one day. Um, but there is this little zoo that is close to us. It's about an hour and a half from where we live. It's called Bright's Zoo. So I'm going to take the boys there on Saturday. My mom's going to come along. Um, my dad, maybe he may be working on something, but my mom's definitely coming. Um, and so we're going to do that on Saturday. I don't know what we'll do on Saturday night. Haven't thought that far ahead. And then on Sunday, um, Dean will be getting home that evening. So obviously we'll get up and go to church and come and hang out with family 
and have our lunch and dinner and all that good stuff. So this weekend is gonna look very different than it normally looks. Um, yeah, so that's what we're that's what we're gonna be up to. Um, it is raining, and so all of the sand that Dean put in the pavers is getting wet, and that means it will the glue will activate and it will lock all of the pavers into place. So we finished that up yesterday. I think I did record that. I actually did record um, Dean and I think Uriah sweeping the sand in. So I did record something earlier this week. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, I will definitely, I don't know that I'll record tomorrow, but I'll definitely bring you guys along for the zoo trip so you guys can see what we get up to there. And I hope you guys are having a good Thursday. I hope the weather's nice in your area. And if it's like it is where I'm at, then I hope you guys are having a restful and relaxing day then. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, it's Saturday and the boys and I are on our way to Bright's Zoo, which is um, it's kind of like a small zoo that's in our local area. It's not a really big zoo or anything like that. It's just like a, just like a mini zoo. But um, we've been there once before with Dean's mom. She took all of the grandkids like two or three years ago, maybe. And since Dean is out of town this weekend, um, he is in Pennsylvania visiting his friend who was the best man at our wedding. And it's been years since he's seen him. Um, so he went up there. Um, so I thought I would do something fun with the boys and we are going to go to the zoo. My parents are coming with us. They're actually going to meet us over there. Um, we went to Boone this morning because I wanted to pick up a rug that was over there for my and Dean's bedroom. And so I'm taking a shortcut so they don't have to go all the way home and then back to, or like, to the area where this zoo is at. I'm bypassing where we live. Um, so I'm on this really windy, bumpy North Carolina, Tennessee back road. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry that the camera is bumping. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're driving. It will take us about, it's about an hour and 10 minutes from our house, but from where we were in Boone, it's gonna be about an hour and a half. Um, and like I said, my parents are already on their way, so I'm trying to be safe, but make good time. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're gonna have a good time today, huh, Jay? I don't know if you guys can see Judah. He's over there. Hi. <laughs> okay, so we will take you along with us in the zoo and show you some of the animals. They let you feed some of the animals, I believe. You can feed a giraffe. Um, they're like four different animals you can feed there. Um, they have like a little petting zoo. You can feed goats. Um, hey, that looks like Mimos carp there, doesn't it? Anyway. We will take you guys with us when we get there. Um, and hopefully the weather's gonna be nice and not super sunny, but a little overcast, so we should have a good day.
brought home a lion. I'm a corona lion. Corona lion. <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm just popping on really quickly to wrap up this week's vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I wanted to come on and say thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Um, if you wouldn't mind to give this video a thumbs up and if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them in the comment section below. And I will see you guys next week, okay? Bye, take care.